Hey anatomy fans, uh, let's start off our first video with the two atypical vertebra, the C1 and the C2. Uh, to build up Yorick here, we're gonna need a solid backbone. Terrible, I know, but let's keep going. Atlas. Uh, fun fact, the Greeks named the C1 Atlas after the Titan who carried the world on his shoulders. Uh, in a similar way, our Atlas supports our globe. Uh, we can start from the anterior segment, uh, this part here, we have the anterior tubercle, as you can see, and the anterior arch. Following, we have the transverse process, let's see from a better angle there, we have the transverse process and the transverse foramen, uh, same thing on the other side. <clears throat> And continuing, let's turn this around there. In the back here, we have the posterior tubercle and the posterior arch. Before we continue, uh, I think we should have some explanations of uh, the words uh, to prevent future roadblocks. So, one, tubercle. These two. I can come up closer, there we go, tubercle, these two. Uh, it simply means protuberance, so when something small is popping out of what usually is a smooth surface, it will be a protuberance, so a tubercle. Uh, two, uh, foramen or foramen, depending on how you like to pronounce things, uh, it's basically a freaking hole, right? I mean. Almost any opening in bone which has soft tissue passing through it will be a foramen. Uh, here we have the vertebral foramen and here is the transverse foramen. Uh, four, a uh, facet, uh, which is basically a flat surface. I'll go into those right about now. The atlas has five facets of interest, two superior ones, these two, and two inferior facets these two. And the fifth one is here on the inside which would be uh, the facet that articulates with the odontoid process. Uh, the superior facets are usually more massive as you can see uh, and this is mostly to match up with the condyles of the base of the skull which would be about there this condyle and this condyle these two will be in articulation as you can see here there we go and here is Yorick sliding back and forth on the atlas <clears throat> anyways and The facet of the atlas and the uh, condyles of the skull, which I showed previously, would make up the atlanto-occipital joint. The inferior facets uh, will be in articulation with the superior facets of the axis. Uh, this would make up the atlanto axial joint. Uh, if we gaze through the vertebral foramen, let's take it from the superior side there, uh, the vertebral foramen, we can divide this segment into an anterior and posterior segment. So this would be the anterior segment and this would be the posterior segment. The border would, you can basically see that the border is uh, the transverse atlantal ligament, which is not apparent now, but it would cross from here to here, and it would keep the odontoid process in check, basically. Mm -hmm. Continuing, the posterior part will, of course, be occupied by the spinal cord. Continuing, uh, let's move on to the C2. 
here is the C2. The most striking part with the atypical vertebra of C2 is the odontary process. As you can see right about, let's make this camera zoom in properly, no? No? There. Now, continuing, we have the C2, also known as the axis. Uh, the most striking part with the C2 will be the odontoid process, obviously. Uh, it's also known as a peg or a dense. On the anterior side, which is this side, of course, uh, we can see the facet of the atlas. And on the posterior side, there is... The facet that articulates with the transverse atlantal ligament. Uh, and if we look down here, we can actually see the vertebral body. Let's see if I can get a good angle there, this segment. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, here are the facets of the axis which make up the atlantoaxial joint. Side note, I just want to say uh, when someone says articulation or articulates, it basically refers to a joint. Anyways, let's continue. Uh, here are the transverse processes, which are a lot smaller, as you can see, compared to the atlas. And also the transverse foramen. Uh, if we continue on, we'll see the laminas, which ends in a spinous process, which in C2's case will be a bifid one. Means two. Important to remember it are two joints at this level that we should remember. One is the atlanto-occipital joint, and the other is the atlanto-axial joint. Now, the atlanto-occipital joint will allow us to uh, nod our heads in a yes manner. So, if we bring up Yorick here, let's see if I can get this correct and attach there. There. You can see the up and down motion of a yes. And this would be over the condyles and the facets of the atlas. Uh, furthermore, uh, the atlanto actual joint would enable us to say no. If we look closely there, the rotation of it, how it pivots around the axis of the odontoid process. Uh, one way to remember that yes of the atlanta occipital joint is that it's a-ok -okay. so a-ok -okay is a good one which is a yes which is positive anyways the take-home message <clears throat> anyways the take-home message i would say that you should remember the atlas with his massive condyles to support our massive cranium allowing us to say yes while saying no requires an axis which our C2 provides uh, with the help of the odontoid process. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed it. Next segment will be the remaining cervical vertebrae. Doctor signing out. Peace.